In today's video, I'm gonna share with you eight common makeup mistakes not to make over 40, but I'm also gonna show you the right way to do them. Wrong way? right way. Before we get started, I have to tell you guys that City Beauty is having their buy one get one free City Lips sale happening right now and I want to thank them for sponsoring this video. Since Lips is going to be at the end of this video, I wanted to share a little bit about this promotion so you don't miss out. So what is it? Buy one get one free on City Beauty on all of their City Lips. The way that it works is you just add to cart the City Lips that you would like and you enter the code at checkout and you will get that extra lip gloss for free. Now let's talk about a few of my favorite favorite recommendations. What I have on my lips right now is my top favorite aside from the clear. The clear is a must have. Everyone must have the clear, but the next one to get is San Diego. I've been talking about this shade for years on my channel. It's pink with a really refined gold shimmer. It's what I have on my lips now. I only have it on with a Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk lip liner. There's no lipstick underneath. I love these glosses because they are high shine. They are plumping and they give the lips volume. So they really give a youthful, beautiful, full, lip, but they're very comfortable. There's no stinging or irritation. The texture is really nice. It's like a true glossy formula. So clear San Diego is my favorites. A couple of new ones that I just picked up that I've been enjoying is nude York. This reminds me of San Diego, but more of like a peachy version of it. Let's put a little bit on top. It's more of this gold peach. Oh, it's so, so pretty really nice. And then Tokyo Kiss is another that I got, which is like this really pretty soft kind of nude beige color. So if you like a real nude muted lip, this one is really, really nice. And this doesn't have like shimmer to it. So it's kind of more of just like a milky glossy formula. So thank you City Beauty for sponsoring this video. I'm going to have all the details down in the description box for their buy one, get one free promotion that's happening right now. And again, when we get to lips at the end, you will see and hear a little bit more about these products. Let's get started. I have curated eight tips. I wanted to pull one tip from each part of the makeup application. So I've got a tip for foundation, for concealer, for powder, for contouring and bronzing, for brows and so on and so forth. If you guys like this series and want me to expand on it, drop a comment down below and I can certainly do more of these because you know, you know, there are a lot more than eight tips that I can share with you. Let's go ahead and get started with foundation. So I was thinking about like, what's a common mistake that I see a lot in foundation? And I think the two things that really pop up for me are going with a shade that is too light for you or going with the wrong foundation formula. So we're going to tackle the right side as the mistakes and we're going to do the left side as the correct way to do it. So on the right side, let's go ahead and go in with the Lancome Tint Edol Ultra Wear Foundation. I actually really enjoy this foundation. This is not a uh, wrong foundation formula for me. I really like this for a long wear foundation. However, the shade of this is just too light. So let's talk about why choosing a light foundation can work against you. I mean, obviously it's the wrong shade. So whether it's too light or too dark, it's the wrong shade, right? But particularly when you go with something really light, it's like almost shining a highlight on the skin. So if you have texture, fine lines, wrinkles, pores, it's going to kind of magnify and bring more attention to them. Now, when it comes to foundation formula, I mean, this sounds pretty basic and simple, but really evaluate your skin concerns and the type of skin that you have and choose foundations that are going to work for you, not against you. So if you have really oily skin, I would probably avoid a dewy or glowy or satin finish foundation because your skin is going to naturally produce more oils throughout the day. And it's probably going to break up the makeup and leave you with a really shiny kind of greasy look at the end of the day. You want to look for foundations that have more natural matte finishes, right? And on the other side of that, if you're very dry, I would go with a more hydrating, glowy foundation to give your skin some more life and avoid the matte, super long wear foundations. Okay, do you see how light this color is on me? It's just way too light. Once I have it blended in, it actually doesn't look too bad, but it's definitely a shade too light for me. So you want to make sure that you're choosing your foundation shade and you're choosing a formula that is going to just really help enhance your skin and not work against you. Now, when it comes to the amount of foundation to apply, this is also an important thing to consider. I would say with most foundations, you need really no more than one pump. Most foundations will distribute what you need in one pump. So if you find yourself using two, three pumps of your foundation, you're likely using too much. Now, 
I like this foundation formula, but do you guys see how the texture on my skin is just really noticeable? Maybe we can zoom in and get a closer look at that. These lights do me some favors, trust me, you guys, but when I'm looking in the mirror here, you can definitely see more pores. It just highlights it and brings more attention to it. And I do want to mention, even though I like this foundation formula, my skin is a bit drier these days, and I can actually see where it is clinging to dry patches around my nose. So I'm going to go in with a better match for my skin. This is the Makeup Forever HD Skin, and I have the shade 1N14, and this has just more of a natural finish to the skin. So it just gives a really a little bit of life and glow to the skin, which is kind of what I need when my skin's a little drier. So I'm just going to pump out one pump of this, and you can already see that this foundation just gives my skin a little bit more life, and the color is a much better match. Now, when it comes to applying your foundation, I always recommend to start where you need the most coverage. So for me, that's going to be in the center of my face. That's where I tend to have the most like sun damage, discoloration, pinkness, just areas that I need more coverage, and I need less coverage here around the jawline. Now, for some others, that might not be the case. You might need more coverage around the jaw. I know when people suffer from like hormonal acne or things like that, you can see a lot of that around here. So start where you need the most coverage because the first place that you put your brush is going to be where you deposit the most product. So you want to make sure that that is where you need it, right? And not where you don't. Because if you end up with too much product in an area that doesn't need it, it's going to look heavy, cakey, and it's going to have a harder time blending out. Now, another tip for foundation, I have always preferred a matte finish. Even when my skin's dry, I prefer a matte finish. What I'll do is I will go in with a foundation that's a little more hydrating like I am now, but I will use a powder to achieve that matte finish where I need it and where I want it. I know it's difficult to tell with these lights, so I'm going to take a picture to show you as well, but this side just looks a little bit smoother. The color is a better match to my skin. It looks more natural. This looks like heavy makeup. This this looks like natural skin. Okay, so let's talk about concealer. Concealer is an area that can go wrong real quick. It is the area that I feel like I have the most trouble and issues with over the last couple of years. As we get older, this is the first place that we start to show texture on the face. Just from laughing, smiling, expression lines, our skin tends to be thinner and drier right underneath the eye. And a concealer by nature is the heaviest product that you'll put on your skin. It is very concentrated, it's meant to deliver full, full coverage. So it's very easy to go wrong here when you put a heavy full coverage product over an area that's dry, textured with thin skin. So it's really important to get the right concealer formula and apply it properly. So let's talk about how you don't want to do it. You don't want to grab a shade that is too light. And I think this is something that we see a lot. People have darkness under the eye. So naturally they want it to be very bright under the eye. So they go in and they grab a concealer that's very bright and they just pack it underneath the eye and they find that they're not getting the coverage that they want. They're like, hmm, that doesn't really look like I want it to look. I feel like it looks a little gray. Let me add a little more. And they get carried away and they start adding more and more and more concealer. And then you have a big mess on your hands. Now, the reason you're not getting the coverage is because, and I say this, so I apologize if this is like the 10th time you've heard this, but putting a very light concealer over dark under eyes is basically like having a dark bruise on your leg and putting sheer white pantyhose over it. You're not fooling anybody. You're going to see a dark gray cast come from underneath it. You need to use something that has a peach undertone and something that's deep enough to cancel and neutralize that color. You can always go back in and add a lighter brightener if you want to have that brightness, but you will not get the coverage that you want by just using a very light concealer. So on this side, we're going to go in with the Tarte Shape Tape Concealer. This is a very full coverage, very pigmented, very heavy concealer. I like this concealer, but it's very easy to go wrong with this if you apply too much. I'm also going in with the shade Fair Light Neutral, which is just simply too light for me. And I'm going to apply this underneath my eyes and I'm going to apply, I'm going to over apply this so you can see. So I don't see this as much as we used to, but back in, I don't know, 2016, we used to see like this number with concealer, right? We used to see people apply it all underneath the eye and then bring it down on the face and do this little triangle thing to get this highlight look to the face. Now, this makes for our entertaining content. It makes for a pretty, you know, filtered video maybe at the end of the day, but in real life, this is not gonna look good, you guys. Okay, let's go in and blend this out. I'm gonna use, I was gonna use my concealer brush, but I've got so much on here that I need to go in with a little bit of a bigger brush. We're just gonna go and blend this out. 
So a few things are going wrong here. I put too much and the color is wrong and I just applied it all over the face really, all over the center of the face. This is one reason that I like to apply foundation first because I like to see what kind of coverage I can get from foundation alone before I go in with concealer. If you start with your concealer, you're likely to apply it on areas of the face that you might not need it. Foundation may give you the coverage that you need, but you will never know because you've already applied concealer. And then if you go in and apply foundation on top of that concealer, Concealer, then you have a lot of product on the skin and it's possible that you didn't need all of that. So my recommendation is to always start with foundation first. Okay, you guys, this is real light. <laughs> this looks a little crazy, right? Okay, so I'm just gonna blend this in. Now, obviously this is way too light and obviously I have way too much. Now I want this video to be realistic. I don't wanna sit here and pile a bunch of crazy makeup on one side of my face and then say, oh, this is a common mistake because you know it's not common that we all pile that much on, but I really wanted to illustrate to you a point and I wanted you to see how that lightness, even if you kind of stop there, you can just see how bright and unnatural that looks. And on camera, it probably looks okay, but I can tell you in person, it's a really heavy and you can already start to see the texture, which is just gonna get worse throughout the day. Okay, so instead we're gonna go and do the right side. I'm gonna go in with the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. This is such a great concealer. I've loved this since the start of my YouTube channel. And I always go to it when I'm looking for, when I'm like doing a video like this. And I wanna just go with a good trusty concealer that will not fail me. And we are just gonna apply a little bit of this. This is how I like to apply concealer. I like to always apply it right here in the little inner corner because I have a little bit of green veining there and I kind of like to bring it right underneath the eye. And you can see that this concealer is deeper and it also has a peach tone to it, which is gonna neutralize that darkness. So I'm just gonna put a little there and then I'm gonna take a little bit from the outer corner and I'm gonna lift up. And this is just gonna help me give the eye a lift. Now I didn't apply any concealer right here in the center underneath the eye, but we are gonna blend it out and cover there. We're just gonna work with what I've applied in both corners. And I'm gonna go in with the Angie Hot and Flashy A506 brush. This is such a great brush for concealer. It's the perfect shape to fit like right there in the inner corner and just press, press, press. And actually, as I speak, as I'm filming this today, we just restocked this brush. This brush has been out of stock for a few weeks. It is our best seller. It is our like viral. If you're on TikTok, you have seen this brush probably all over your feed. Okay, and I'm just gonna press, press, press to blend this out. I'm also gonna take this corner and kind of sweep it and blend it on the lid and underneath the brow. So now I've got a concealed under eye that looks natural, right? Quite a difference between the two. And I didn't take it all the way down the face like I did on this side. I think it's very easy to see trends happening on TikTok or Instagram or YouTube, beauty trends and, you know, getting inspired by them and wanting to recreate them. But just keep in mind, you know, really approach your makeup, how what you need. Like sometimes I think we jump on these trends because everyone's doing it, but it doesn't really make sense for our skin, our face shape, our eye shape, whatever it might be. That's why I like to really teach like the theory behind what I'm doing. So you can then say, oh, well, you know, Lisa does this because her face is shaped like this, but mine is shaped the opposite. So it doesn't really make sense for me to do that, right? Understanding the theory and not just explaining the steps. Perfect. So now you can see, obviously this looks a lot more natural. The skin is flawless, it's covered, but it's very natural and skin-like and it doesn't look like I have obvious makeup on. Okay, let's talk about bronzing and contouring. I think as we get older, our face shape changes for most of us. Obviously this is not the case for everybody, but gravity starts to take hold and our face just kind of drops a little bit, right? We start to lose that fat on the face. Contouring is really designed to give structure and definition. It is a trick that makeup artists have used for decades just to create the illusion of more structure in face. It's to create the illusion of like a shadow, right? It's to enhance the natural bone structure. So if you look in the mirror and you feel like your face face kind of has lost a lot of the facial fat and you feel like the face is really narrow or thin or defined, then I would probably skip contouring and instead bronzing. Bronzing the skin, warming it up, giving it that glow. I think a lot of us equate a round face with like youthfulness. So contouring just gives a little bit more structure. So I would probably advise to skip contouring and go with bronzing of the two. There's really no need to do them both. The only time that you'll find me contouring and bronzing is if I'm getting a photo shoot done for a BK Beauty campaign or headshots or or I'm on stage or there's some reason, but day to day I'm doing one or the other and it is usually 98% of the time I am bronzing the skin. So what is the difference? We will show you on the right side. So contouring is using a shade that is cool toned, right? It is supposed to mimic the look of just shadow. So imagine you 
had a light shining on your face and you're gonna look in, you're gonna see a highlight where the light's hitting the face and then below that you will see a shadow. So that's what contouring is supposed to mimic. So I have two shades here. I'm gonna show you the difference between warm and cool because this is a very obvious. Okay, so right here I have bronzer. This is the Patrick Ta Cream Bronzer, which I love. I'm gonna be using this today. This is the Westman Atelier Contour Stick, which I also love. But do you see how cool and gray this is and how warm this is? So that is the difference between a bronzer and a contour shade. Okay, so let's go in with the side that we're not gonna do. So I'm gonna take this contour stick and I'm gonna contour like normal. I'm not gonna do a bad job contouring, but I just wanna show you the difference between contouring. So I'm gonna do a little contour line here to create some definition. I'm also gonna put a little here around the hairline. We'll go down the center of the nose. Some people like to contour the jaw lines. We'll go right underneath there and we're gonna blend this out. Now, this isn't gonna look bad, you guys. I don't want you to think this is gonna look bad, but you will see a difference when I apply bronzer on the other side and kind of what that does to the skin and the face. I'm just gonna blend this out. I'm using the BK Beauty 107 brush. This is a brush that I love because it works for all face shapes and sizes. It works on smaller, more narrow faces and it also works on larger faces. I'll use the 111 on myself, but the 111 is a little bigger and I probably wouldn't recommend that for someone that has a smaller face or a narrow face. Now this product is really beautiful. If you do like to contour and you're not going to give it up, this is one that I would get. It's a really beautiful formula. It blends super easily. Okay, so you can see right there, you know, it has accomplished the mission of creating more structure. You can see more of a cheekbone here. It looks really natural. You can also see more of a chiseled jawline than this side. Looks good, doesn't look bad. But let's go in and bronze the other side and you'll see what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna go in with the Patrick Ta Cream Bronzer. This is the shade She's Bronzed. This is one of my favorite shades and formulas right now. It comes with the cream. It also comes with a powder on top. I've been told he has explained to use this by applying the powder first and then the cream on top. I don't do that. I just love to go in with the cream. And I'm using the same brush, dipping it in with the tip. And we're just gonna tap this onto the skin and get some warmth. So this is gonna give me a warmer look. And I'm also gonna blend this out so it diffuses a little bit. The contour was real sharp, where bronzer is more of like a sun-kissed look to the skin. Like I just got back from vacation and my skin is sun-kissed. <laughs> That's what we're going for. So you see it applied and diffused and more part of the face. It's not just a straight line that's blended out. It is still gonna give some definition, not like contouring will, but it will still give some definition and dimension to the face. And I'm just gonna sweep this on my hairline. I'm going to also sweep it on the side of the nose. Okay, so do you see what we have here? The difference. Warm, sun-kissed, glowy skin, and just kind of more of a subtle definition defined cheekbone, right? Not that this looks bad at all, but this just looks a little bit softer, right? A little softer, a little more youthful. This brush is perfect for it. If you don't own this brush, this is one you got to grab. Okay, before we move on from cheeks, let's talk about blush, okay? First of all, I'm a big proponent of cream blush, really for any age, but especially as I get older, it is my go-to. I still buy a powder blush here and there, and I still use them, but if I had to recommend like a product for a youthful look to the cheeks, I would say cream blush all the way. So I'm gonna use a cream blush on both the wrong side and the right side, but let's talk about color and placement. So here I've chosen the e.l.f. Putty Blush, which I love this formula, by the way, but this is the shade Caribbean and it's just a bit deep for me. It's got this like wine kind of rosewood feel to it. I like to go with something softer, a little more peachy pink. I will go with something rosy or neutral or nude, but I don't usually like to go with something really that's a big contrast. So we're gonna apply this and we are going to apply it. I'm gonna use the same brush, the 107, which is a bit big for a blush brush. It'll work, but there are better options. So for the don't side, I'm gonna use this brush. I'm gonna go into this blush and I am going to apply this incorrectly, which, what does that mean? So I'm gonna start right here in the apple of the cheek and I'm gonna pack the color on. Look at that, I mean, right off the bat, you're like, whoa, Lisa, that's just not right. <laughs> I'm going to blend it out and I am gonna lift up. Okay, this is just not right. I think this actually might've overdone it. I'm gonna take my foundation brush to kind of soften this. Cause I want this to look like someone might actually apply it this way. Not like I'm just trying to make it obvious and not look good, right? So I'm gonna take my foundation brush and bounce it on top. So let's go back. Okay, so applying it really heavy in the front of the face. So like on the apple of the cheek, but really heavy in the front and then pulling it straight up to this hairline, right? So it's kind of like doing this whole notion. It's just too much blush. The placement is everywhere. It looks very, very artificial. This doesn't look natural at all. It's not looking like my cheeks are naturally flushing. It is very, very distracting. Let's go and just add a little 
kind of blend this part out. Okay, so I blended it out so it looks like someone might actually apply it like this, not like clown makeup, right? But even now you can just see that it's very distracting to the face. When I look in the mirror, all I see is a lot of cheek color. I see it way too heavy over here. It's just everywhere, right? It's all over the apple of the cheek and I have it going up. It's just too much and uh, applied too much everywhere. So I'm gonna go in on this side for the right side. I'm gonna use my favorite blush of all time. This is the Jane Iredell blush stick in the shade Balmy. And this is like giving you 15 years back. <laughs> I feel like I put this on and I look like a teenager. Maybe not really, but that's how I feel. So that's what matters. I'm gonna go in with the BK Beauty 112 brush. And do you see the difference in the brush sizes here? We have a much smaller brush. It's actually angled, so it's perfect for the cheek area. Um, you have a lot more control. This one is more dense too than this one. This one is lighter. So this is gonna pick up a lot more product and deposit a lot more. This is gonna give me a little more control and allow me to really build up, which is what I want for blush. So let's go in here to Balmy and I'm gonna go straight from the brush to the product and I like a lot of blush I'm not gonna lie I like a lot of blush I've been known to apply too much blush and keep in mind you guys do what you love do what works if you love anything I've done over here you keep doing it who am I to tell you not to do it <laughs> this is just a little bit for educational purposes in an entertaining video but this is your life do what you want <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and smile and use the apple of my cheek as a guide I'm gonna start to place the color there and I'm gonna tap and press the brush onto the skin and as I do that I'm gonna be softly moving it up, okay? So I am getting that color on the cheek, but I'm also blending it up and lifting the cheek. The thing is, is you want it to be a real soft lift. You don't want it to be a harsh line that's not fully blended out. You want it to be nice and soft. You know, here's the apple of the cheek. I just kind of want it to like kiss the edge of that apple. I don't want to bring it up any further than that. And start in little bitty layers. Go back and add more if you want, but really slowly work your way up. Okay, so I feel like that's perfect. We got some glow, we got some color, we got a little bit of a flush. It looks like more natural and not distracting. It's so pretty. Okay, let's talk about brows. Now brows are so important. It is the frame to the eye and you could execute beautiful, flawless airbrushed eyeshadow, but if you got the brow wrong, no one's gonna really notice. People are just gonna zoom in on that brow. So let's get the brow right. Brows are personal, okay? So keep in mind, you are going to need to evaluate what type of brow you have, what products you need. But overall, we want to have softer, natural looking brows. The type of brows we want to avoid are really heavy, dark, drawn in, stark brows. Now you might have dark brows, you might have black hair and your brows might be dark. That's great then fine, but you just want your brow makeup to match your hair. You don't want it to be darker than, okay? So let's talk about the wrong side. I'm gonna go in with this little brow kind of pomade type of thing. This is from Benefit. It has a little brush and it's a color that is way too dark for me. Now, I'm not really a fan of this type of formula of product. I know these used to be real popular. Like, you know, I remember using the Anastasia Beverly Hills brow like gels or not gels. They were like a, a pomade, kind of like this in a pot. You can get a nice look from I just find them a little harder to achieve that. I feel like you get a stronger application with this. So for that reason, I like to use pencils, but I'm going to go in with this. This is a shade that's too dark. And we're gonna go and fill this brow in. Now, when you're doing your brows, you wanna have very light strokes. So on this side, I'm not gonna have a light stroke. I'm just gonna do a little bit more pressure and I'm doing longer strokes with the brush. So I'm kind of creating this drawn in look versus natural hair. And I'm basically just drawing in almost like a stencil. I'm almost drawing in a brow. And when it comes to the edge of the brow, we're gonna go and we're gonna create a real angled kind of sharp brow. Now I am guilty, This I used to do this 20 years or so ago, I worked at Mac and there was a girl that worked there and I always loved her brows and they were very, very, harsh and ankled and it worked for her, but it didn't work for me. And I did it though, until my boss one day told me, sit down, I'm redoing your brows. And then I got it like, okay, I've been doing these wrong. So you can see that I have a really sharp, dark brow here. It almost looks too perfect, right? Like I used a stencil for it. The next thing is you could just leave it here or another mistake would be to use a brow gel that's too dark, furthering the too dark brow trend. So I'm gonna go in with this brow gel here from Too Faced. I actually love this formula, but I have it in a lighter shade. And we're gonna apply a little bit of this to set the brow. 
and I am left with a brow that's just too dark. It kind of makes me look a little angry. It looks a little harsh. Let's go on the other side and show you how I do my brows. So I'm gonna go in with the pencil. I love this one right now. This is from Too Faced. This is the Super Fine Brow Detailer. This is the shade Medium Brown. And it's uh, kind of a skinny little pencil and it's gonna allow me to create a softer hair-like look. So I'm gonna use this to go in and create the shape of my brow. And if you notice, I'm doing little sketch, sketching motion. Like I'm not drawing it on in one long stroke. I'm really softly sketching. I have very light pressure. I'm not putting too much pressure on the skin. I'm allowing the pencil to just like softly gaze the skin and give me a soft look. And when it comes to this area, I'm just gonna keep that a little softer versus, you know, more ang angular and, and harsh. Okay, another tip is I'm gonna use the spoolie on the other side to kind of just comb through it to further soften it. If you ever feel like you do get a little harsh, just take a clean spoolie and soften it. Okay, perfect. All right, now I'm gonna go in and apply some brow gel and I'm gonna use a fiber brow gel. This is from e.l.f. It's the Wow Brow and I have the shade Taupe. It's just gonna soften everything and just give a softer look. So do you see the difference between those two brows? Quite a difference, right? Okay, for eye, let's talk about eyeshadow. I'm gonna go in and apply a primer on both sides. This one is from e.l.f. If I can tag it in the YouTube shopping feature, I will. Are you guys enjoying the YouTube shopping feature? I have started using it because I think it makes it just easier for you guys to shop the products and find them. I'm also leaving links in the description box still if that's easier for you, but I kind of love the feature that YouTube just rolled out. Okay, so I'm just gonna shear this out all over the eye. Okay, so let's talk about eyeshadow. So one mistake I see a lot, and I think this just is kind of just outdated. I used to do my makeup like this 20 years ago. I think it's just like a style has stuck around for some, but it's just not really flattering. And this is regardless of your age. It's just having a really stark contrast of shades on the lid. So we like a lighter one on the lid to brighten and make the eyes pop. And then we typically like to have a little bit of a deeper outer corner and crease to give some more dimension. That's the idea behind the eye that you see with light and dark. But you want to gradually build up to that. And so it's like a gradient, right? You don't want to see light dark and then that's it. So if you're gonna do that look, really kind of build your way up to that. So for this sake, we're gonna use some of the same shades on both sides, but I want you to see how not to do it versus how to do it. So let's start with the don't side. So the don't side, we're gonna go in with a crease color and we're just gonna go right out of the bat with something dark like this. Let's do this. I could be real dramatic here and make it look terrible by going in with something really dark and something really light, but let me just even show you how you can go wrong even by like not you know, going super, super dark. So we're gonna go in with this shade right here. By the way, this is the new makeup by Mario Matz palette. Okay, so then I'm gonna go into the crease right here and we are gonna work that right in the crease. And I'm gonna go back and forth, back and forth, all the way over. All right, and then I'm gonna take that same color and we're just gonna connect it right here to the lash line and back and forth, back and forth. Okay, so I have a really dark crease color here, right? It's like real dramatic. I am gonna blend this nicely. I don't want it to look like I'm, like I said, I wanna attempt to do a good bad job. <laughs> like I want to do a bad job here, but I want to make it attempt to like actually look like something we might do and not just look crazy. So there we go. I've got the crease color on. It's actually blended kind of well and nice. It looks like it's been applied well. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and apply a color on the lid and we're going to go in with something lighter. Let's go in with like the lightish shade right here. We're going to pop this onto the lid so that we can make the eyelid pop is the idea behind this. We're going to pack this on, pack it on and then we're gonna meet the two. So there we go. The makeup is actually applied well, okay? I blended the eyeshadow out real nicely. I packed that color on the lid. The application is on, but the problem here is that we just went in with light and dark. We didn't give enough uh, shades between the two to really build and get an airbrush look. So let's reattempt this and we're gonna go in with just a couple extra shades. So I'm gonna start first with this shadow right here. This is deeper than my skin tone, but it's not as dark as this, right? It's actually one over. It's definitely not as dark as that. It's matte, so it's gonna create some definition. Now we're gonna apply this first in the crease. So let's go here and we're just gonna softly sweep this back and forth. This is gonna give us a good foundation starting point. I'm gonna go back and forth, back and forth. We're still gonna go in with that dark shade, but I just want you to see how and where to apply it. So create that definition first with this shade, which we've done, okay? Got that, real nice, very pretty. Next, we're gonna go in and get a little bit of a darker shade. Let's go in with this shade right here. 
and I'm taking a little crease brush. This is really great for this technique. Also, if you have very small eyes, this is the BK Beauty 211, and it's a nice little tight but fluffy crease brush. So you have a lot of control, but you can still get a beautiful blend because the shape is round and fluffy. Okay, and then I'm gonna place this right on the outer corner, and I'm just gonna kind of work it inward and into the crease. So I'm not necessarily going all over that first shade, but I'm going underneath it, and then I'm packing a little bit on the lid. I'm just gonna go back and forth, back and forth a little bit. There we go. Now, I promised you that I was still gonna go in with this dark shade, right? Because it wouldn't be fair if I didn't. So let's go in with a dark shade that we used on the first eye. We're gonna take a little bit of this on the tip, and we are just going to apply it right on the outer corner, and I'm just working in little circles here, you guys, just to get that off of the brush and onto the skin. Once like I feel like I have, then I will softly start to blend in the crease, but I am not taking this all the way over, okay? I'm not taking it all the way over. I'm gonna take it like right, if I had to say, I would say I'm taking it over about a third of the way over because that's a pretty dark shadow and I don't want it to weigh the eye down or look too harsh, okay? All right, so I feel like I got all the shades I need for the definition in the crease. Let's go and add that brightness. Now that shade I did is pretty light, so I wanna give a little buffer shade. I wanna go in with with this shade first and, and just kind of tap this on the center of the lid and then work my way over with that lightest shade. So I'm gonna tap this right here on the center. Then I'm gonna flip it over and we're gonna go with that shade that was lighter and we're gonna pop that right in the inner corner. And then we're gonna blend those two together. Okay, so do you guys see the difference here? The same shades that I used here, I have applied here. The difference is the placement and I used a few transition shades between the two. It just gives a much softer look. Wait until we have liner on and mascara and you will see the full impact. Wow, what a difference. Okay, next let's go in and talk about liners, do's and don'ts. I'm not gonna tell you not to use black eyeliner, but I will tell you that I rarely use black eyeliner. I will use black eyeliners for like a special event when I'm wearing a lash band or you know just have a dramatic look, but I'll always smoke it and smudge it out. I just don't use black anymore. I find it can be very harsh on a lot of people, not everybody. Some people can pull it off, darker skin, darker hair. For me, I love to use a chocolate brown or a shimmery bronzy brown that looks really beautiful. Let's go in on this side and let me show you why I don't use black eyeliner. So that's one tip, use a softer color liner. Maybe it's not brown, maybe it's like a slate color. I also like a softer liner. So I really don't do this whole thing anymore where I'll, I will line from the inner corner of the eye. And I'm gonna try and do good liner here, you guys. I, just, I really want to keep implementing that because I think sometimes we see these mistakes, do's and don'ts, and we go so crazy on the mistake side that of course it looks bad. I want to apply these products well, but just the wrong product, if that makes sense. I'm doing a line all the way from the inner corner to the outer corner with black, and this liner's not bad. The line itself and the application is good. So I could leave it there, and that's a little harsh. Doesn't look too bad though. You also wanna avoid doing too thick or heavy of liner, okay? So I'm just gonna make this a little thicker. Okay, and then also lining the lower lash line. I do use a little liner on the lower lash line, but I'll show you on the right side how I like to do it. But I definitely don't recommend doing black. And when you use a pencil like this, you always wanna go back and soften or smoke it out. I could make this look even worse by taking it all the way to the inner corner, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna leave that like that because I think that looks bad enough. Okay, let's talk about the right way to do it. So I'm gonna go in with a bronze liner. This is from NYX. This is one of my favorites. Grab it if you can. This is the shade bronze. It's very affordable, so that's one of the reasons I love it. And it's just a great shade. It's a rich chocolatey brown. It has a little bit of a shimmer to it. Shimmer's nice on the eye because it reflects light and just gives a softer look. So I'm gonna start right here on the outer corner and I'm gonna work my way in. And I'm actually gonna take my liner. I'm not gonna take it all the way to the inner corner. I'm gonna take it, I would say, about two thirds of the way over, just about two thirds of the way over. And I am not worried about this liner being perfect because I'm gonna go back over this with a brush in a minute and we're gonna smudge and smoke this out. Okay, so I've got my liner on. The difference is here is the color we used and I didn't take it all the way over. Next, I'm gonna go, and I'm gonna do this before I go on the lower liner because I don't want this liner to dry. I'm gonna go in with a brush to smudge it. This is the Nikki LaRose BK Beauty N12. This is another brush that I have just been obsessed with since this collection launched. I use it every day. I love it. Now you can use a shadow. Let's actually use a shadow. You can also, you know what? Let's not use a shadow. Let's do this first and see what kind of uh, softness we get and smokiness we get from just the eyeliner. But if I need to, I can go over it with a shadow. Okay. I love this brush because it really just moves products like this. This uh, coal pencil, it will soften it and smudge it out. And it just does so in a beautiful way. And it's nice and tight, but also soft at the tip. So it's comfortable when you do this technique. I'm just going to soften that out a little bit. Okay, perfect. Oh, look at that. So pretty. 
Okay, let's go on the lower lash line now. Okay, so sometimes I will use just shadow on my lower lashes. Sometimes I will use pencil. I'm gonna use a little bit of pencil. I'm gonna keep it extremely light, you guys. We're just gonna do it the tiniest bit. I mean, I would say I did that about a fourth of the lash line. I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna go with a light shadow. We're gonna go in here with this one and we're just gonna run this on top of it. The beauty about this pencil is it's like, it's kind of waxy. So even though I just put a little bit right there, this brush allows me to move it and smudge it a little further over. So that's why I didn't wanna take it too far over because then I would have too much product and it'd be too heavy. So I'm just gonna take this shadow and we're gonna lightly give a little bit of a halo of liner down there, just a pretty soft halo. Oh, gorgeous. So pretty. So those are my tips for eyes. We can already see you guys. What a difference. Isn't this nuts? Okay, let's go and go ahead and powder the face. I totally skipped over powder. So we're going to rewind, go back in time. Okay, so let's talk about what not to do in powder. There's a few things you don't want to do. You don't want to apply too much powder. You don't want to apply the wrong powder formula. And you don't want to apply a powder that's too light. This is very similar to concealer, the same type of concept. So on the don't side, I'm going to go in with this long comb. I think this is long, long time no shine. This is actually a really nice powder, a very nice blurring mattifying powder. I'm going to go in with quite a bit though, because we are going to apply too much. We're gonna bake and I'm just going to kind of pack this underneath the eye. Okay, and then we're going to apply on the face. And you know what, let's just kind of apply all over this side. I don't recommend powdering all over. I recommend powdering where you need it and powdering as light as you can to get the foundation set and to get the finish that you want, but don't over powder. Okay. So I have over powdered here. My skin looks like a porcelain doll, but I have over powdered. Okay. So that's what you don't want to do. Even if this looks okay for now, what's going to happen throughout the day, it's going to just really settle and show every little fine line that I have. Let's talk about what you do want to do. Choose a powder that's very, very lightweight and sheer. This one is my favorite right now. This is the Givenchy Prisma Libra powder. I love the shade two and the shade three. Today we're going to apply the shade two. Now I like to very strategically powder. I like to put a little bit underneath my eyes and I have very light pressure. Did you notice on this side, I was just packing it on, packing it on here. I'm going to softly kind of pack it and lightly tap. I'm not using a lot of pressure. Then I'm going to go and I'm going to powder right around here. I like to kind of like hug the perimeter of my blush and my bronzer. Okay. And then I also like to powder like right on my forehead and down my nose. So basically kind of the center of the face and the perimeter of the cream products. Doing that is just going to kind of create a little border. So throughout the day, if you get hot or sweaty or oily, you have that perimeter of powder that's going to work as a border so that your cream blush, cream contour doesn't like slide or move around. But we're keeping it light, you guys, very light. Okay, so we can see the difference. What a difference. I'm feeling good about this video, you guys. I hope that you're learning a lot. If you've picked up any takeaways from this, drop it down below. I think that's the best feedback that I get is like, oh my God, I learned this or I'm gonna try this. And so, okay, let's move on to mascara. I'm gonna go apply my mascara off camera because this video is entirely too long and I'll be right back. Okay, so one of the most common mistakes I see with lips, especially when we're trying to get more full shape to the lips, is not lining them. Now, I'm going to raise my hand to this because I was guilty for many years of not lining my lips, but no longer. I have learned my ways. So in general, I think it's great to pick a lip liner that is kind of a pinky nude shade close to your natural lip color, maybe a little bit deeper as just one to always have in your kit. You can use this with any lipstick color, even if you're using a bold lip color like a red or a fuchsia, getting that base down first with that lip pencil is going to create the shape for you. Now, what you don't want to do is go in with a lip color that's really dark or harsh or bold and not have some type of lip liner down first, especially throughout the day when that color fades, it's going to fade off really unflattering. So you want to have some shape built first. Now you also want to not just line the lips, but you want to subtly fill in the lips a little bit. Again, that way when your lipstick or your lip gloss fades, you're not left with this obvious harsh line around the lips. For the don't side, let's go in and skip lip liner. We're going to go in with just a lip color. I chose a shade that is just a little dark for me and my coloring. This is the Do Me Baby why does NARS choose these names? By NARS Velvet Matte Lip Pencil. And I'm just gonna fill in my lips, this side, this half, with this. I'm not going to line them. I'm just gonna fill it in. Now, this formula is 
kind of more of on the matte side. It's not a harsh drying matte, but there's no shine to this. Now, if you do skip the lip liner, you can always use the product you're using, whether it's a lipstick or a lip crayon to kind of use as liner to define the lips. But keep in mind, when you go in with a shade like this that is darker, it's difficult to overline the lips, right? Because when it fades, it's going to be all over the face. It's gonna be messy. It's not gonna look good. So this is like a perfect example of when I should have gone in with a shade that was more natural first, even if I'm applying this color. There we go. We applied it nicely. It's actually applied pretty nice, but because the color of this is so dark, it kind of makes the lips look smaller. Now on the other side, I'm not gonna use a ton of products. I'm actually just gonna use a lip pencil and a gloss. I'm gonna go in with the Pillow Talk by Charlotte Tilbury. And I'm going to, I'm gonna actually tell you what I'm doing and then I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna slightly overline the lip. I'm gonna start at the border of the lip and just create a thick line back and forth, back and forth. So it slowly extends past the lip line, not overly dramatic overlining, just subtly. And then I'm gonna fill in the lip with the liner. So if you want full voluminous lips, I always recommend using a gloss. My favorite is the City Beauty City Lips for like plumping. I have several shades here. I'm gonna share all of them with you. I'm gonna apply the shade Sun Diego. This is a lip plumping lip gloss. It gives so much volume and shine. It feels so good on the lips. This color is nice. It's like pink with a gold flex to it. And I love that there's some shimmer to it, but it's not glittery. It just kind of highlights the lips and makes them look really full. So it gives just a really full plump look. I actually like to take the wand and kind of trace over my lip liner with it to get a really full looking lip. It's so beautiful, very hydrating, glossy, but not heavy lip plumper. So this is what you can see. Now we're gonna remove this and I'm gonna do a full lip in the city lip so you guys can see how amazing these glosses are. But I just wanted to show you, look at how small this side of my mouth looks and look at how full this side of my mouth looks. It's just the matter of lining placement and color and product use. I mean, that just doesn't even look like the same mouth, does it? So I am gonna remove this and apply City Lips all over it. I do wanna thank City Lips, as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, they are a sponsor of today's video because they are having their buy one, get one free sale right now. So you can buy one City Lips and get another free. I have a few other shades that I love here, like the clear one is a must have. I also recently picked up Nude York, which is a really beautiful bronzy gold shade. And then I picked up another one called Tokyo Kiss, which I'm gonna show you guys what that one looks like as well. Okay, so this is New York right here. It's just a really pretty peachy shimmer. And then we have Tokyo Kiss, which is more like a kind of a beigey nude with some gold to it. Really beautiful if you like a nude kind of milky lip. These are my favorite lip plumpers. They feel so amazing on the lips. I know you guys love them because every time they have a buy one, get one, like you guys just go to town. <laughs> it's such a great time to stock up. So I'm gonna list these four shades down below for you. And the way that it works is you just add two to your cart. Once you enter the code, when you check out, it will remove one of those. So basically just add however many, if you're gonna get two or four, and then you'll get those uh, extra ones for free when you enter the code. This sale is happening through the 22nd. So I'm gonna have all the details for it down below. Okay, you guys, so I think we've just demonstrated the lips. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this and apply City Lips all over the lips. So this is what the San Diego City Lips looks like on top of Charlotte Tilbury's Pillow Talk Lip Liner. I just have those two products on. I did fill my lips in a little bit with the lip pencil to give a little bit more color and definition, but I just love this beautiful, full lips, high shine. They're very comfortable on the lips. They don't sting or burn the lips. They're super comfortable. I love this. This is my favorite shade. So I'm gonna link this shade along with the three others down below for you if you guys wanna shop the City Beauty City Lips buy one, get one free sale happening now. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you took away a lot of takeaways. If you learned anything, a new tip or trick, let me know down below. As always, thank you guys for spending your time with me here on my channel. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.